in Catholic social, especially modern Catholic social teaching, we have been critical, the church has been critical of both uh, unbridled capitalism and of socialism and communism. And that's run all the way through the tradition. Um, so, and we have not, though, offered a third way, that there is a third economic system that is, is the Catholic way to go. But what we've offered is critiques of both systems going along. With the fall of at least Western communism in 1989, and the writing within the next couple of years by John Paul II, some commentators thought he was saying, well, the answer is free market, free market capitalism. But he went out of his way over the next couple of years in addresses he gave them, really all around the world to say, no, we're still critical of how the market functions. Um, and so in the writing of Benedict, let's move forward into, in, the, in Benedict's writing, especially in his, his third encyclical, which was his second really social encyclical called, called um, uh, Deus Caritas S. No, I'm sorry, Caritas in Veritate. In, in the encyclical Caritas in Veritate, Benedict basically says we need to have within society at large an economic system or the market system. We've, he reiterates that it needs to be constrained, it needs to be regulated in certain ways. We need, for example, minimum wage legislation. We need legislation that prevents um, uh, large conglomerations of, of power and wealth in certain ways that interfere with the market. So there are certain ways you need to control the market. But we also need to have government, which whose role is, primary role is the common good again, which also then regulates the market. And we need basically, we would call in this country the non-profit sector as well, which is what some people call the voluntary sector. So it's where you get the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts and the CYO and the St. Vincent de Paul Society and the local parish. Those are all parts of the voluntary sector, and that a balanced society has a very healthy voluntary sector. One of the problems of communism was it had no voluntary sector. There was the family and the individual, and there was government. And so it, it lost the benefit of all of these uh, I didn't use the word earlier, but when I talked about subsidiarity, we talk about these other institutions and organizations as intermediate or intermediate organizations or intermediary organizations, basically between the individual and government. A healthy system in Catholic thinking has a very active nonprofit sector, or in the international world, they would talk about NGOs, non-governmental organizations. So you want to have a Jesuit Refugee Service, you want to have a United Nations, you want to have non-governmental. Well, the United Nations has some governmental aspects, but you want to have like Doctors Without Borders, Catholic Relief Services in the international sector. You want to have all those organizations, and you want them as healthy as possible, because they do, they do things the market can't do and that government can't do. And so you really need all of these sectors of society for a healthy society. And I would say that's pretty firm within the Catholic tradition. In the writing of Pope Benedict in uh, um, Caritas and Veritate, he talks about the economy of communion, which I think had most people scratching their heads. Um, what is he talking about? And actually, in the press conference at which uh, the encyclical was released, there was an Italian professor there who talked about it. it actually is a movement that comes out of the Focolare movement, which was a lay Catholic movement that was founded after World War II. And it tries to create kind of a blend between the market and the nonprofit sector. And so what they've done in the economy of communion organizations, and there are a couple hundred of them in the United States, it's more common in other places in Brazil and in Europe is, to have, for example, a business that is organized in such a way that, let's say, one-third of the profit comes back into the business in terms of growth and shareholder profit. So one-third is invested in the local community, and one-third goes back to individuals, et cetera, in terms of promoting this economy of communion. So it was a very, I think when, when the document came out, when I first read I didn't know what the Pope was talking about, and I actually had to go in and do some research and found an article, actually, in the, in the Fordham Business Journal about the economy of communion and what this was all, really all about. But it's about a particular blend of market and nonprofit or NGO that, that was unique, et cetera. And the Pope was saying we should experiment with more and more of these kind of non-traditional economic organisms.